I'm not a quitter. I'm someone who's fighting their ass off. And I think that's what people see sometimes is, oh, he must be fine because look, he's pushing through. Well, guess what? I film or I, 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 I post in those moments sometimes, not on purpose. It's just when I feel, I've happened to feel good. I don't have the ability always to film when I'm feeling like shit or I'm malaised out. And I have a lot of those videos which I will be posting. I also didn't wanna drama, not dramatize, but I didn't wanna shove that image in people's face. But I realized unless people see the flip side, and I realized when I lived with people longer term that saw me and witnessed me, for example, when I lived on this ranch this past year in New Mexico, my landlady probably thought I was one of those malingering, like just psychosomatic cases because at the beginning I was feeling good and I was doing work around the ranch and I looked fit and I had a good attitude. I mean, I usually have a good attitude, but it's, she then got to witness the crash, the severe crash and how, unless I had severe bipolar illness or severe other mental illness, which no stigmatization of that it's a real thing and it absolutely should be checked out but it was became evident that I wasn't somebody who was having these manic episodes or anything it was just that I'm an enthusiastic talkative person when I feel good and when I don't boy will it look like depression it sure does I bet but that's because when you're fibroed out and you're in pain you go in your body hurts I'm like a 90 year old person and I can my, my hands hurt, every injury I have hurts. I can, my brain, the biggest annoying symptom is brain fog. It's such an awful term because it doesn't give the magnitude of what it's like. I say it's like having dementia but you're aware of it. So as somebody who had a, a dynamic mind, at least was able to trade stocks and manage different things and live a fun life, throw parties, events, to all of a sudden not even be able to manage your singular day of basic needs is really humbling and embarrassing and I think that I it's part of why I'm doing this because I want people to I'm not gonna prove it to you I don't need to do that I, I have all the in here I have all the medical records I even have doctors that are willing to and I may in future like podcast form have some of my physicians come on and and in a way, I guess, validate what I've, what my conditions are and what I've been through and the treatments I've done over these years. But I don't think that's exactly necessary. I think when you end up watching someone or you end up seeing what they're doing, I hope that authenticity comes through. I hope the belief comes through and that you can see that, why would a person take their life off the tracks? Why would they end up in a tent like this? And, and talking all the time how they want their life back and showing examples of like stop start stop start not because I just quit because I get if you think about it, it's quite logical somebody who has a mitochondrial breakdown imagine your battery in your body doesn't work so you plug in your phone you not only does it not charge right the charge is broken but you never know the percentage you can't even see the percentage of what's on the battery so it's a mystery you might feel good to charge up the battery and you get and you go do something, but it really was only at 2%. And you go do a normal task that somebody else does and you crash out. And you crash out for days. It's called post-exertional malaise. It's P-E-M for short. Many people experience in the chronic fatigue syndrome, autoimmune, etc., etc. I'm not going in depth into my conditions today. That's another episode and another time. But this is just an introduction to why I'm out. I have chronic illness I want my life back I am driven to the core to get it back and to create and to get my voiceover business going my coaching business and if I have to do what I call a jobby job in between I'm not against that I just haven't built up to a point where I've been well enough to work consistently right before this COVID happened I was lining up something in the mortgage lending area and it looked great it would look like something I could do while I was doing my creative stuff and then I could eventually let go of that as I create my other businesses. Then this thing strikes. Another opportunity is with a nonprofit that was helping the homeless, which I was part of. So it's not as though people in my position don't want to work, don't want our lives back. We're not looking for our food stamps or our handouts. Majority of people out there, I promise you, 
they want to work for a living. They want to be hard workers and they want to be creating and doing in life. And I'm going to leave it with that and, and just so you know what I am, why I'm doing this and, and why I come off maybe absurdly passionate, but can't help that. That is coming full circle back to the Greek passion. Maybe it's my Jewish passion. Maybe it's a mix. I always say it's an evil combo in a good way. So I think that, you know, we are part of what, where we came from. And that leads to what we should probably look to our genes and stuff to not completely set our destiny, but it is a factor to leading to COVID-19, our blood type. I recommend everybody know their blood type, but especially now, knowing if you're O positive or O blood, like I myself, you know that you're not in the clear, but at least you're a little safer with COVID. And if you're type A, you gotta be even a little more careful. So, you know, there's, there's things about our heritage that lead to our health, our vitality, and our overall wellness. And I think it's something that is good knowledge to have, and you can have fun with it, or it can also be something that helps you determine your medical care. Okay, some of these things are gonna be long. I'm gonna split them into two. I don't even know how long I've been going. Uh, I don't know how to do anything except for long form. I'm learning, I will do some short ones. For now, bear with me. And I wanna tell you one other thing, and I might include this in another video. Yes. I went for a supply run today. And part of why and the, the things I'm asking for help with are not because I want luxuries. I see people in my chronic illness community online and Twitter getting these huge deliveries because they're in big cities and they have husbands that work or they have money and they're able to order all these fancy Instacarts and delivery from grocery stores and food. And I am just so happy for them. And I wish not only I had the budget for that, but I had the ability. I'm in a small, small area. And I don't think they even have those services in this market, but I'm gonna try to figure it out. But today I went to the grocery store and I just don't think it's, I went to Dollar General. I don't think it's worth it. I can't trust people. Uh, in these areas, the message hasn't gotten out. People, there was a guy from out of town, a young guy that was coming through and he saw me as I was masking up and putting my goggles on. He's like, he's like, hey man, you're doing it right. And I was like, surprised. I'm like, I haven't heard that. And he said, no. And I go, yeah, man, well, I'm, I'm compromised. I have kidney disease and it's a long story, but let's just say I got to protect myself and, and I think this is serious. He's like, no, I, I, he said he had had a, somebody he knew had been really affected already. So he was a young, young guy. And then we get in the store and nobody's paying attention to the distance. No joke, woman with her kid just like coughing into the air like it was a celebration again. And, and then another guy, I, I, it's not my imagination. He's with his wife, older fella, and he just looks at my mask, he starts coughing for fun. This is the kind of stuff you get, I don't know if it's happening in other cultures, I wanna say it's toxic parts of America, I hate to say it, but I don't know if we'd experience it somewhere else. Unbelievable. And I just almost decided to drop my stuff and get out of there, but I just said, all right, calm down, do your distance, and, um, you know, I heard this woman's young daughter going, Mom, I thought you said we don't need a mask. And she's saying, oh, you don't. It's no, you don't need that shit. And I was like, I don't think you don't need it, but I don't think that's the, look, if you have a mask and you're compromised, I think you should wear it. That's my, from what I've read and what I've seen, it protects you, especially if it's a good mask like I have. To each their own, but making fun of others, I think is, or not even making fun, but just having total irresponsibility, it, it, it's just, it makes me cautious. And now I'm only gonna go first thing in the morning and when it's less crowded and just gonna make strategic runs. But if, if there's anybody in this Joshua Tree area that watches this, anyone that can help, anyone that knows the delivery things, I just might have to just spend charge on it and, and just go deeper into debt, which is probably gonna happen. Because I don't know that I want to take the risk so much to go get supplies. Uh, it's, it's just I can't count on people protecting each other. And 
It's this whole we over me mentality we need. Instead, we are me, me, me in the US. And another guy there, probably 25-ish with his pregnant wife, walking in her girlfriend, full belly, walks in the store, I'm checking out at the checkout, and he looks at me and goes, just starts laughing and pointing, and his wife starts laughing. Okay, you know, I, I, I guess, I, I don't know, folks. Am I, am I crazy to think that's an odd behavior? Chime in, let me know, or if you're running into this and in, in what to do. How do, we, how do we protect ourselves from people who are just jackasses? I mean, really, jackasses. There's no other way to put it. And I try to be respectful as possible, and I, I really do, but sometimes it can just drive you insane. So I'm not gonna be driven insane, but I am gonna take more caution. I'm gonna take more deep inhalations of the lavender I have from Abiquiu, New Mexico. Okay, signing out, me and good old Green Tara and crew from the windy tent somewhere near Joshua Tree. Thanks for checking me out and I will hope to get better at this format. I'm just working with it and even if I get two of you to watch these through, that's fine, or one. It's, it's not important for me. It's important that it resonates with somebody and I will get better. For now, this is where I'm at. Okay. Hope everyone's well and staying safe.